Do you ever struggle with finding the right embellishments for a set of photos? If so, stick around because I'm going to share some helpful tips on how I found inspiration for embellishments to help tell the story behind these photos. If you are new here, welcome. For those of you that have been with me a long time, welcome back. I am Erin and we are going to create a double page layout. I'm documenting these photos where we were visiting the Da Vinci Museum in Florence and you can see there was a lot of really cool stuff to see in this museum. My kids are pr practically young adults, but they turned into little kids in this museum. Here's one. Just playing with all of the moving parts. And if you're familiar with Da Vinci, you know he had a lot of really cool machines. And these boys were in heaven because it was a really hands-on museum. The first thing I do is I look at the colors of my photos and just kind of the vibe or the overall aesthetic of the photos. So you'll notice here we have a lot of kind of these browns and neutrals. There's a little bit of blue in the photo and some creams and tans. So that is absolutely perfect for the Good Life collection because we've got some very soft gray blues, um, some tans in here. I mean, it's just really quite perfect. But this one here is really what sparked the idea because you have the it's very farm inspired paper with the windmill and the like water trough bucket there but it reminds me of these photos because we have like the windmill blades in here and then it very much resembles to me um, da Vinci sketchbook because we've got all of this scripty writing on here and plans and I'm going to pull in some ephemera that's going to go along very nicely with this but then along with colors so we've got the colors right check that checks all the boxes there first but then I'm going to look at you know I don't have any embellishments for these photos I do not have da Vinci stamps or da Vinci ephemera so I'm like what am I going to use to embellish so looking at this photo we have this was this really cool machine where you can or you know uh, exhibit where you look into it and then this is what you can see it's got it's like a giant kaleidoscope almost it was really fun but I see a hexagon in there and I see gold so those were you know uh, ideas that I could pull to bring into this so I do have some hexagon dies so I did cut some hexagon shapes and coordinating colors that I can use with this collection so you always hear me talk about using a circle or a tag or something to act as a landing spot for your embellishments so I'm going to use hexagons in this case inspired by this photo I want to start putting this layout together and then we can talk about tips for the embellishments when we get to that part. So let me scoot these out of the way. I've already got my verse mats here because it's going to be a double page. And I am using White Daisy because I want to, don't know what that is, we'll hide that part. I, I want to add some background stamping to this layout and it always shows up so nicely on lighter colored backgrounds. I went ahead and cut this paper into, this was 12 by 12, so I cut it into 12 by 4, which leaves me with an 8 by 12 on this side. So I definitely want this paper to show. Now this one's tricky because I don't want to cover too much of it up. So I thought about putting it on the end here and then bringing my photos in something like this. So I've got, now these photos with the white border are 5 and a quarter by 4 and I have three of those and then I have these which are with the white border three or two and three quarters by three and a half so they're not a true three by four they're smaller because I knew I wanted to have like a vertical column like this so I size them down so because if they were three by four it'd be complete top to bottom and I wanted a little space in between my pictures so this is kind of what I was thinking originally and then I will be bringing in that pocket plus insert in the middle to add even more photos I had this piece that is six and a half by twelve so I cut that large enough to accommodate these two photos which left me with this little piece and sometimes I like to just kind of carry it over to the other side so I was thinking something like that. Mocha is a featured color in this paper collection and you can see all these rich chocolatey brown colors in the photo so I wanted to introduce this. What I did is cut a photo mat for each of these and that's actually going to just bring that color in but mainly for these smaller photos they are really going to pop on this mocha color or at least in my mind they're going to let's see how it looks 
on the actual layout. Oh yes, that is going to look so good. Okay, so we have all of our uh, photos matted. So I got to this point and I started thinking about embellishments and I usually like to create that visual triangle so it's framing in the photos, right? So I would naturally kind of put something down here, maybe something here and here, or, you know, there's a couple different variations. You could have a cluster here, one up here, and then some down here. And I've got these big hexagons that I want to incorporate. So I started kind of looking at my layout and I did off camera play with a few different designs. And I think what I'm going to do is actually bump these in. And that's going to give me lots of white space on the outside to, um, you know, add those embellishments and do some stamping on the background. So we can bring these pieces back in. Now, again, I don't want to cover up. I really want this windmill to show. So what I'm going to do is cut out the section behind here and then trim it so that more of that pattern shows up top. And you know what I think? Let's move this over here move this one inside because adding that pocket plus insert is going to look really nice right over this column and it'll lend itself well to the design. So we'll do something maybe like that. It needs some tweaking, but uh, we'll figure it out as we go. So now we can play around with some of these hexagons and you know what? I'm going to put this a little further underneath this paper so we see even more of that pattern on the top and bottom of the photo. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe a little something here. And then, so I got two, so we can kind of have that color across and then three little uh, smaller ones of the mist, you know, and I'll just kind of roughly set these for now. Obviously I'll move them around when I bring in the smaller embellishments, but this is just going to give me kind of an idea. And again, this idea, came from the hexagon in the photo. So look for patterns in your photo. You know, you can find inspiration in so many different places. So I know that this is the point when a lot of us can get stuck because the embellishments that came with this paper collection, the paper collection was easy for me because the colors are perfect and I was really inspired by this background piece, but the sticker sheet, there's not even much left of it, uh, but it had a very farm kind of, you know, homespun feel to it. So it really wouldn't have gone well. And then I've got the, see, you can see these are stickers that are randomly stuck to the plastic, but anyway, you know, very farm. And then we had windmills and things like that that I've already used. So really what came with this collection wasn't going to work well for, or isn't going to work well for these photos. Now I use Evernote to catalog my stamps. And what I did is obviously this is Italy, it's old world, it's vintage. So I typed in vintage in Evernote because that is a tag that I use. And I found all of these stamp sets under my vintage category. On this one here, I there's a little hand with a pencil drawing and a pocket watch. And those are really cool. There's this admit one. I might be able to use that because this was a museum layout. Now I would have never have thought of this stamp set. So that's kind of cool that I get to be reminded to use it. Now this is a current stamp called on the clock. We've got a collection of clocks with Roman numerals here, different sizes. Now I know that clocks were not invented at the time of Da Vinci, but you do not have to be literal. Clocks are old and they can be vintage and it's going to give me the look and feel that I'm going for. So I'm totally okay with using this one. Now this stamp set was exclusive to makers and it was a special promotional stamp that we could get. But look at the quill here, the feather with the quill and this stack of books, an old letter and this candle. Definitely items I can use on this layout, right? I'm starting to feel like I have a ton of ephemera to use. Now here's an old one. This is called Make It Count, but we have more clocks and I thought I could use this, but what really drew me to this stamp was this set of numbers. I think that that will make a really cool design element on this layout. And this one here was Message in a Bottle. This was a stamp of the month. And on here, we've got this scroll. It's a, a paper scroll, an old paper here. So I could use those. And then we have more vintage. This one's called, we have Pocket Watch, a camera, a frame. And again, the camera was invented after Da Vinci. But again, same as the clocks, I am okay with using that. So I have tons of ephemera I can work with that I would never have thought of to use. 
There's also this cool arrow element I can use. So I, again, I have all of these stamp sets and that is gonna give me tons of things to embellish this particular layout. I also cut out this little shape. This is a compass. It was used for drawing. I know we still use these today in math. You can put a pencil on it and it draws different size circles. So Da Vinci definitely used these and I cut that out in gold foil paper, which was inspired by the gold framing in these hexagons. So I thought that this would be really cool so what I like to do if I'm stuck and I have no idea what where I want to go with the layout is I head to Pinterest and I literally typed in Da Vinci layouts now all I got were were Da Vinci junk journals but that led me to find some print and cut ephemera that I can use so I've got all of these little word sentiments that are Da Vinci inspired famous knowledge engineer discover and uh, theory, so those are cool. And I literally just printed these out. I did pay for them, it was just a couple dollars. And then I've got all of this um, junk journal ephemera that is Da Vinci inspired. So I can definitely add these. We all know this one. This was probably one of his most famous sketches, but how cool is that? So now I can pull these in with all of my stamp sets. I've got some word stickers and a Cricut cut. So often, you know, I like I said, I only found junk journal stuff over on uh, Pinterest, but all I need sometimes is just one little element. You can take an embellishment cluster off a junk journal page and run with it. So sometimes you just need a little something to spark your creativity. I pulled these bits of ephemera because one, like I said, he's most famous, you know, everybody is familiar with this one. And we did see this, they had a little gift shop. And then this one shows one of his sketches. So I definitely want to use these. And I was thinking I might need to put the hexagons on top and just kind of layer these under here just so they're peeking out. And I don't want to cover too much of that one up because I want that to show. So that's looking kind of cool. And then I love word sentiment stickers. And these are something, you know, if you like your handwriting, get a piece of, you know, toffee colored cardstock and, you know, just add your handwriting in a black pen or stamp them out with a tiny little font. So, you know, it's just kind of fun to add these little pieces here. So I was thinking maybe we can add these to the photos. We'll do one there, one up here, I got a little blank spot. And then I don't think I'm gonna use the man and woman, but we'll use engineer, famous, and knowledge. So some of these might kind of go on the hexagons here. Let's see, I know I had some more. I had one that said learn, where is that one? We can kind of put these down here. Actually, let's go famous engineer, so that reads correctly. You know what, I want more of this to show, so let's layer this one over that background paper so we have a little more real estate to work with. And then this one too. Well, maybe we'll leave that one like that where this corrugated tin paper is peeking out. And then we can bring, if I'm gonna use hexagons over here, I definitely wanna bring these in on this side just to kind of repeat that. Maybe we'll put one down here. So we have a couple and I just won't use the largest hexagon on this side. This little guy maybe can go. So it's just really about, at this point, you know, clustering your embellishments. But I have all of these stamp sets, so I'm gonna stamp some of these images to bring into this layout. Before we start our stamping, I am going to bring in my all-purpose mat here and my toffee ink and a soft blending brush. And I want to add a aged patina to this pattern paper here. So just using a very light hand, I'm adding a soft glow of this toffee ink and it's going to give the paper a vintage look. It's just, you know, how paper sits around for a long time and it fades and darkens. This is going to better match the feel of that junk journal ephemera I created. So we went around the edge, a little bit in the center there. And I also wanna darken the edges. Now these little two by two zip top bags, I leave them open, I don't actually close them, but I get a lot of questions about those and I do order them on Amazon. I think they were originally like for coin collectors, but they fit the little foam sponge discs 
perfectly and they're great for organizing and separating the colors. So I'll have that linked in the description box below. I went ahead and did the other side. Now we can do the stamping. I keep a bunch of white daisy scraps in this little acrylic drawer and I wanna bring out a few of these so we can stamp some of our ephemera. I've got two of the clocks and I chose the ones with Roman numerals because they seem, you know, older to me and I'm using black ink. I am going to die cut these with circle dies. So I just want to leave enough room to accommodate the white border of the circle die. So we'll do two of these. Now you have all of the clock hands also. So let's go ahead and assign or add some times to the clock faces. This is my stamp chamois, and it is great for cleaning up as you go. Now, I just wanted to show you this because look at that cool pattern paper they created with these clocks. And I thought that is a really fun look, and I think I might do something like that in the future. So I have the different hands here. There's a couple different lengths to fit the different size clocks and I've not stamped with these yet before so I'm just practicing a little bit to make sure they are inked up and stamping nice and crisp. So we will repeat the process and add this one and I'll get the other clock done off camera. I definitely want to add this feather. This little quill looks really neat. And this vintage stack of books here. But for this one, let's switch to mocha ink just for something a little bit different. Because remember, we introduced the mocha with our cardstock photo mats. So let's just, I'm going to cut this one out. It does not have a coordinating die, but we'll stamp that right over there. I will go ahead and get those all cut out off camera. Let's bring this back in. I'm turning it because I'm going to stamp those numbers. Remember I said I wanted to bring these in. I'm gonna go along the edge. That is from this stamp, where is it? It says, oh, make it count, very old stamp, but I will leave that linked in the description box below just in case you wanna go hunting for it, or maybe you have this in your stash too. So I'm just making sure there's no ink on my block and right, let's see, right there. And then just give it a second to soak in. Then I'm going to ink this up again. Now remember we have the photo and embellishment in the center, so that part's not going to show. So I'm gonna do the bottom half of the numbers on the lower half of the page. We're done stamping. I can flip my Versa mat back over. That is already looking super cool. I'm very excited about those numbers. That is a stamp set I will never purge. I've used those numbers on birthday layouts and just a bunch of random things. And they just, it's kind of a neat design element. So let's bring our pieces back in here. And you'll see this just all covers up that blank spot where we didn't have our number stamped. So it makes sense. Let me just bump those up a little bit here. Now this corner piece, it creates this little pocket. I think it's really fun and I wanna use it. So I do have some open space in the bottom. I can't obviously put it back all the way on the corner, it would cover too much, but I think it might work if we just bump it down a little bit. Here are our clock pieces, the feather and the books. So I am going to kind of, let me get my word stickers back in here, and then use the hexagons. We can fill in these uh, spaces with the clocks. Let's bring this one over here, actually. And it's just a matter of moving the bits and pieces around until you are happy with their placement. So let's layer this little compass here, and then we will put this smaller clock over on the opposite side. And we wanna make sure our clocks are facing the right, right side up. We don't need crooked clocks. Those are the things, sometimes I don't catch it until I'm photographing my layout later or adding it to my album. I'm like, oh, my clock's upside down. Those hexagons are gonna make great landing spots for these tinier pieces, just to kind of bring them together as one unit rather than just randomly stuck on the page floating on the background. Hopefully that makes sense. I also have this piece that was one of the print and cuts and I thought I would kind of use this as a little horizontal interest to anchor these pieces over on the left-hand side. 
Now on all of these cool machines in the museum, there were gears, of course. So I found these two little gears on that same stamp set and I thought they'd be fun to add little elements to the background. So I chose black ink because I'm stamping on toffee. So we'll use this one right here and then I'll kind of make a little cluster of them together. So the smaller one, actually let me move that word sentiment there and we'll stamp it underneath. And oops, I did smear that. I actually, you probably can't see on camera but I moved my hand ever so slightly and smeared the little cogs so what I did is stamp that on the same you know toffee colored cardstock and cut it out no one will ever know and I thought that looked kind of neat so I have a set for the other side for my title, I wanted to bring in the black element of the numbers on the right hand side. So using my Cricut, I cut out the word museum and then I used the print and cut feature on Cricut to cut out the word Da Vinci. And I did that in charcoal with a white border. But do you see how the black brings in the numbers from the other side and really complements that. I've got my T-square ruler here and some Barely Art liquid glue to adhere these to the layout. And this T-square ruler is gonna make it make getting them straight super easy. I actually stacked a couple die cuts together when I created this title. So they are a little bit thicker like paperboard and they'll just sit right on top of that ruler and it makes lining them up you know, very simple. I'm really happy with how this title looks. And I think, again, that ties in with those numbers over on the other side perfectly. I have shared these here before on my channel. These are Pocket Plus inserts and they are awesome. So you remember earlier in the video, I said I wanted to move this column of photos to this section. And that was because I knew I was adding in one of these Pocket Plus pages and look how perfectly that fits with the design. So there's lots of different styles of these. And this one here, there are three four by four squares. So that's design five. You can see there's one, this holds four three by fours in landscape mode. And then there is, this is just for strap style and this is for post style album. So they're four by sixes, three four by sixes. Now I had photos that weren't four by four, but what I did is I selected this one and I printed my photos the same size as these so that I could add some more ephemera and decorate these also. So I put my journaling in the middle and I just use those extra bits. Here's some stamping, the same little book and the gears. I layered those over the bottom of the photo of my son Hayden turning this uh, machine here with all of the wheels and cogs and um, and then just had these little bits of ephemera I wanted to incorporate. So my journaling says the Da Vinci Museum in Florence was really neat. There were cogs to turn and levers to pull. The boys were in their element exploring the hands-on exhibits. Watching their interactions took me back to their younger years and made this museum experience a memorable one. So we've got my son and his girlfriend Desiree looking through the giant kaleidoscope. And then on the other side, I've got my friend Bonnie and one of her sons. And there's Hayden and Desiree playing with some of the interactive bits and pieces building. It was almost like Lincoln Logs. It was pretty fun. So you'll notice I have a blank spot. My friend has a group photo of all of us and I didn't have that picture. So she is going to get that off of her hard drive and send it to me so I can add that group photo right here here. But I love how these just sit in the album so it'll line up perfectly and then it'll be this really fun interactive element and it looks exactly like the bit underneath here so it really you know plays into this design seamlessly. Let me hold this up so you can take in the details. And of course, still shots will be available over on my Instagram, Facebook, or Pinterest account. I hope you found these tips helpful for when you are stuck with not knowing quite what to use to embellish your layouts. And of course, it does help to have your stamp collection, you know, cataloged in some manner so that you can quickly find those stamp sets. Everything I used will be listed in the description box below. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon on YouTube.